Hey there, I wanted to talk to you about a topic which is really important to me at the moment and that's um, play. Now play is one of those subjects that can polarise people when you talk about it. Uh, there is a lot of research around what play is, what play isn't. And I think a lot of people have a vague understanding of what play is but never really think about the, the true meaning of it. Now, the most common way of describing play is that play is this absence of rules. It's um, a free-form uh, event done just for the sake of it, which to a certain extent is true, but actually there's a lot more to it than that. Play is how we learn, or one of the ways we learn, and it's one of the most powerful ways we learn when you consider the fact that through play, children learn everything from how to walk to how to talk. But how do you define it? Is it a lack of rules or is it a lack of rules that we sort of understand? So when you consider it, think about it this way, that play is a lack of system rules. Now system rules are those rules that we add to things um, that aren't part of the intrinsic set of rules within an environment. So for instance, if you were to play golf, for instance, as a very simple way of playing golf, you walk to the hole and you drop the ball in. And playing, if you were going to be playing, that's the sort of thing you would do. You would just find the easiest way of achieving the goal. Uh, you'd experiment, you'd have a free environment to play in, but that would be it. You would eventually work out that the best thing to do is just to drop the ball in the hole. But golf has extrinsic rules, it has system rules, these rules that you have to hit it from a tee and you have to avoid the bunkers and there are all these obstacles in the way which is what makes it into a game, this, this addition of obstacles and, and system rules. Play, the rules are more about the rules of the environment, the rules of what you're playing with, meta rules which I talk about in the blog that is um, tagged below. It's more a the rules that you're worrying about are the rules that constantly change and the rules that are made up as you go along, but also the rules that can't be changed really. For instance, gravity. You can't adjust gravity from Earth. So when you are playing with a ball, you throw it into the air, it comes back down. You can't change that. You can change the weight of the ball, you can change it for a balloon, but gravity will still affect it. So this is a, a rule that just can't be changed. Um, and then you have meta rules like communication and personal um, codes and all these sorts of things. But really the key point is that play has a lot of rules. It's just that you don't necessarily know what they are until they change. So what makes games? Well games, as I said, are these system rules that you add to it, these obstacles you put in front of play. And that's what play often evolves into. Children, when they're playing with something, after a while they understand what they're playing with. So if they build something with bricks, they understand they can build this many high before it falls over. They understand that they can drop a brick and it falls to the ground. But that becomes boring very quickly. So they start adding new rules like, well, I'm going to put 10, bl 10 blocks up, then I'm gonna see how many bricks it takes me to throw at it to knock them all over. So they start adding obstacles and start creating a game. Why is this important to us in gamification? How does play really play a part in gamification? Well, it should be in everything we do. We should allow this freedom, this freedom to fail is what it really is. Freedom to explore the environment and to test things. This magic circle where you're enabled to have a go at something, to simulate things, to play with ideas. We talk about, I'm playing with an idea. Well, that's because it doesn't matter if it fails. I'm allowed to fail if I'm playing. If I've been given a six million pound budget, failing becomes very, very awkward. But if I'm able to test things before I spend the budget and I'm able to play with these ideas and innovate, then I would probably be approaching that six million pound budget a lot more intelligently because I'd have a lot more ideas on how to use it properly. So again, it's how we learn, it's how we innovate, it's how we test theories, it's how we evolve. The closest thing to play that I have seen in real life is research. Because research is it doesn't matter very often if you fail as long as you can prove you failed and prove why you failed and understand why you failed. Because in understanding why you failed you start to understand how to succeed. 
So actually researchers are probably the closest sort of adults who are employed to play. So when you look at your gamification, consider how you can add this kind of freedom, these kind of this lack of system, of system rules, and how you can encourage people to experiment and try things for themselves. Cheers.